Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean in the Podcast channel. And welcome back. It's a new year. And you may notice I'm in a little bit of a new setup and some new scenery. And so um, today I just wanted to bring you along and kind of show you the new studio setup of, you know, what I've done over the last couple of weeks. So uh, first of all, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who purchased in the month of December. We were able to raise over $150 for the charity I was supporting, which was Healing Abuse Working for Change, or HAWC, H-A-W-C. Um, they're a local charity to me who help people who are in domestic violence situations get out of those situations and provide them with resources. And so I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who did make a purchase. It really does make a difference in our community. Um, and also, if you noticed, we have hit 3,000 subscribers on this channel already, which is so exciting and um, just so thankful and grateful for all of your support and everything that kind of goes into this channel. I hope that you guys really do enjoy it. I hope you find it educational. I hope you find it inspiring or inspires you to create or to dye or to knit or crochet um, some things. So anyway, uh, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody here who is subscribed and anybody who is not, if you'd like to be, you're welcome to hit the subscribe button. Um, it's free. YouTube may or may not send you notifications uh, according to the latest uh, consensus on uh, how YouTube algorithms work. Uh, you can hit the bell if you want to try and be sure that maybe a notification will come to your inbox. But um, anyway, so it's a new year. Uh, last year at this time, I had just started doing speckled gradients. I had just started really getting the hang of my sock knitting machine, which has been great. And, you know, I just have a whole bunch of new ideas for the new year, and now I have a space to do it in. So today I wanted to do a little studio vlog, kind of show you me working in the space, the things that are around me. Uh, as you can see, I still have my yarn rack, I have my desk and shelf. Um, <clears throat> and then what you're sitting on right now is the working table with the rescainer and my Swift. And then behind that is some undyed yarn. And then over here, all my dyeing supplies and of course, my little fish tank. Uh, there was a 20 gallon fish tank in here, which has been downgraded to a five gallon fish tank for my beta. Um, he was sharing his tank with a couple of really tiny fish, so I figured it was time to just downgrade him to be a solo, solo tank member and put the other fish in my larger tank. So uh, yeah, so if you're interested to see what's been going on, to see a tour of the room, to see kind of, you know, where things are at for me, just keep watching. Um, if this is not your style of video, I totally understand. Uh, just, you know, I'll catch you in the next one, but I will be kind of going over what's new in the shop today. I will go over the new projects that I've been working on, the new tools that I have, and also, you know, kind of, you know, just kind of go through all of that stuff. Uh, if you haven't seen my last video, if you want to click up in the i card here, I'll link it for you. It is um, a little bit on how I plan colorways. So I decided to do a video about how what the process is that I go through when I'm planning a color story. So when I dye, I really do like to dye several colors together that kind of go together. And I didn't use a movie or a video game or book reference. I just used a color reference for this demonstration. And so I used the Pantone Winter Colors. And then in the process of filming, I had planned, I had planned this video out in October. I filmed it in November. And then between like October and December, they announced the um, the new colorway or new color for 2019, which was Living Coral. So you can see in that video how things changed a little bit where I had started planning this color story and this new color came into play for the Pantone series. And it kind of changed the feel of what I dyed, which you can kind of see right here behind me. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, so let's just get into everything. Um, I will show you the colors that I've dyed for the last, well, for this coming up update. So I still have to do all the listings this week, and then I think I'm just going to put them up on Saturday. So Saturday, uh, January 12th at 1 p.m. will be my next shop update. 
I do have stock in the shop right now. Uh, some fingering weight yarn, um, single ply, soft yarn. I also have some Yak 50 gram skeins still available. These colors, these lovely, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I also have a little cold, so I'm sorry for any coughing or whatever you may hear. So colors like this where it's very um, deep, Julie tones. I have these in Yak on 50 gram skeins. As you can see, I haven't reskeined them all yet because, well, it's a very large endeavor to reskein. <laughs> and I've only just gotten this space set up for myself. So, uh, so yeah, let's just kind of get into everything. I will show you now the finished colors that I dyed up from the video on planning a color store. Okay, <laughs> so I have them here <laughs> in my little lap. <laughs> um, so, uh, the premise behind this color story, I decided I wanted to do, keep it within a rainbow spectrum, so try to include one of every major color of the rainbow, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, and also a couple of neutrals that would go along with any of the colors in the spectrum. I also dyed up a living coral color which you can see right here. Um, and it is really pretty, very corally, very lovely. Um, and I only have mini skeins. So I just finished, oops, as you can see here, lined up on my desk, all the mini skeins. So one of every color will go into five mini skein sets. So it will include the coral color. I'm going to put up, um, I think a pre-order listing for the coral color so that you, if you want just some coral, that you can order it on whatever base that you want. Um, so the dye that I did uh, for this particular setup was on my DK base. So I had a bunch set up uh, ready to go a couple months ago. I, I had prepared a bunch of yarn, you know, before the holidays set in. And I never got around to dyeing it, so I thought, well, why not just dye this new set on DK since I hadn't had DK in the shop for a while or actively dyed on DK for a little while. And so the color story, I wanted to incorporate both the winter colors from 2018 and also the living coral colorway. So I wanted to kind of bridge that gap between like the jewel tones and then also the new color for next year, or this year, should I say, and um, kind of bring the color story up a little bit. I didn't want to dye it, excuse me. I didn't want to dye it deep and dark like the last update that I had. The last update I had on fingering weight, I did a lot of Julie tones kind of like this, and I had a lot of darker colorways. So I really wanted to like lift it a little bit for the winter time to make it a little more bright and cheerful, especially during a season where, at least where I live, it's pretty cold and dark. So <laughs> having brighter colors, working with, you know, uh, lifted spectrum makes me feel happier. So I thought I would do that. Now, none of these colors are named right now. Uh, I thought about putting these into my affirmations collection since they're all so uplifting. At least to me, I find these colors very uplifting and they're very light. So some of them are more saturated and some of them are more speckly on a lighter base and that was intentional. And so, um, yeah, so I'll just go kind of through all the colors that are here. So this first one is the beginning of the color spectrum. So it has some deep wine tones, some pink, and some really red orange. So it comes comes out very um, saturated. This is what it looks like reskinned. So just as an, um, a visual for how the colors blend together. Again, there's no names for these yet, but I'm thinking that they're going to be affirmations. All right, then this is the orange in the spectrum. So again, something that was a lot lighter. Um, uh, this has a, a red orange, but not as intense as the last one. This also has a wine color, like a Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon <laughs> type color speckled in there. Uh, and it's on a lighter base. And then this is what this looks like reskinned. So it's very 
blendy. It's not too too dark in terms of the final um, in terms of the final outcome. And then the yellow in this series is like this. So this is a couple of different yellow tones. I did a couple different techniques. I did some speckling and also some pouring over this skein. So it comes out to be a little bit of a tonal or semi-solid with some orange, orange yellow speckles, as you can see through the skein here. It looks quite nice. And it doesn't look very much different uh, reskeined. Some of them, so we have some breaking of the yellow, so it's a green yellow, and so there are some little specks of green in here, but not very many. So you can see that there's a little tiny green speck there, but uh, I think overall it's a really nice yellow shade. And then green. So this green is a chartreuse. Um, one of the colors for 2018 was a really light yellow green and I was going to use a chartreuse and a yellow and kind of blend and pour this really pale green but I decided I wanted to speckle with it so I did and then it has this nice warm brown in there as well so it's green and brown on a light ecru base and this is what it looks like skeined up so again not overpoweringly green not overpowering overpoweringly brown either, but a nice earthy color. And then this blue. So we have an indigo. We have a teal, an indigo, and then also a forest green, which shows up pretty nice. You can see it right here. Nice forest green tone, but generally it is blue and um, indigo. But one of the colors, oops, and then show you. Well, you know what? I guess it doesn't really come up too bad. Too saturated. So you can see it here. So you get the pops of the dark blue, the pops of the green, and the pops of the mid tone um, kind of teal color. Um, there was a really nice forest green in the. In the um, 2018 winter color so I wanted to incorporate that as well and then there, there was also a color it was called like Kessel blue or something but it was a mix between like teal and green and so that's why I speckled those two colors together to kind of get that color in there without having to blend and pour and do you know these intricate things I just wanted to speckle the nice pops of color all right so red and yellow green blue violet so this is the violet that I've dyed. So this is a, I would say, more of a red, red purple color. And it has some sandy brown speckles on here as well. So I wanted to kind of take it down a notch. I didn't want it to be just bright purple. I wanted there to be a little bit of a, a tint to the base. So you can see how when it rescapes, you can see a little more of the brown as well as the purple in there so quite lovely and then the next color is one of the neutrals so this neutral is speckled dark gray and also the same sandy brown color that is on the other yarn so you know it just looks like a deeper speckle but it's not as intense as you would maybe think it's pretty light-handed and here was what it looks like reskin. So it doesn't look too much different. The colors really blend very well together and you just get those pops of darker, darker gray or brown. And then the last color is kind of a tonal um, light variegation. The tones are very similar in here and there's also some speckling that wasn't intended but I think it, it lends really nicely to the yarn and I think it has to do with the olive color that I used. So one of the 2018 colors uh, was an olive color. I think it was like martini olive and I want I have an olive brown dye uh, that's like a brownish green purpley color. It's a very strange color and um, it's behaved differently in different applications. And so what I decided to do was to 
do a tonal with that and also that sand brown color. Um, and this is what has come out of it. And when it was in the dye pan, I really didn't like it. And, you know, seeing it in person, it's much, much different than what it was in the dye pan. So it doesn't look very much different reskained. You can just see the colors more blended together rather than in the sections of where they were dyed. But it gives this really lovely, like, multi-dimensional um, feel to the yarn. So there's the olive color and also the light sand brown color. There's really no white in these skeins, but you can see some of the warmer tones of the brown and then the cooler tones from the olive. And then there's also this like blue and red speckling, which I think came from the olive dye. It's one of those more temperamental dyes that sometimes will strike really quickly. And it doesn't always, um, like it, it doesn't always blend seamlessly when you're, you know, um, mixing the dye stock and so when I did this you're supposed to make a slurry of boiling water in the dye, slurry it together to get a full um, solution of the dye in water. Of course the radiator is going to turn on. We'll just we'll just wait for the radiator to turn off. <laughs> I think the radiator is done for at least a little while. It's a little very chilly outside so we have these big huge steam radiators so when it turns on it's just this huge loud hissing sound hopefully it won't turn back on at least while i'm talking to you like this and not doing the voiceover so hopefully that works uh, but anyway so when you're doing the slurry it's to give you a really consistent and fully dissolved solution of dye and your water or water and acid or however you're mixing um but i didn't do it that way intentionally um but because I wanted to see how it would behave if I didn't do it that way. And I'm, I'm actually very pleased with the result, even though I didn't really care for it when I was first dyeing it. I'm not sure how well the little tiny speckles will translate on camera, but it just gives this little dimension to it. So you can see like this purpley brown, kind of cool color and this cool grayish color. That all came from the olive dye. And then this warmer, very light sandy brown, came from the brown dye. And so um, I took notes on all of these colors, so they are repeatable, and I think I will dye them up on my fingering weight base, or um, my everyday sock base. So, um, but yeah, I, I really do enjoy this color, and it looks pretty much the same well, reskinned, which is great. Um, and I think that this color would pair well with any of the colors that are here, especially in something like brioche or, you know, um, slip stitch color work, because there's a nice contrast between the lighter and brighter colors and then this color as well. And then the other thing that I've been working on has been on one of my new gadgets. So for Christmas, I got a couple of new things. Uh, one that I didn't ask for, well, I kind of hinted that I wanted, but I didn't really come out and say it. And then the other thing was because I got this other thing. So my husband was sneaky, he was not on my Christmas list. My Christmas list consisted of a new jacket and a stand for my loom, which is up on this shelf over here. And um, I, I for sure just thought he was going to buy the, the stand for my loom because it's kind of expensive and I, I was like, all right, well, we're not buying a lot for each other. We're just going to buy for the children this year. And so when I got my Christmas presents on Christmas Eve, we exchanged and I opened it up and I'm like, you have to be kidding me. You have to be kidding me. One, this is an extremely expensive gift that I never would have asked for for myself. The radiator is turning on again. We're not, we're never alone here. It's, it's always interesting on this podcast. Okay, <laughs> so the radiator's turned off again. Hooray! So um, I never would have asked for this gift for myself. I did hint and make jokes like, oh, you should get me a new one of these. Ha ha ha, wouldn't that be so funny? Because the one that, the one that we had has gone to the kids uh, in a very protective case, but it's an older model. And, you know, I have my phone. So, you know, we're kind of like a tech family. Like, both my husband and I love technology and we love getting new technology and we save up so that we can afford new technology. When it comes out, we have a brand new computer that we purchased last year. Uh, we saved up for it and my husband uh, spent some of the tax money to build a new PC so we can game more because we both love to game in our spare time. And, um, 
So I opened up this present and I almost passed out because I thought, well, this was way too expensive and what the hell, but I found it extremely useful because it now has allowed me to explore projects that I've been wanting to do but haven't been able to do. So this was the Christmas present that ended all Christmas presents for me. This was is an iPad Pro 12.9 inch, legit case, pencil. It's been very fun to work with. Uh, I'm sure that anybody who's watched the previous video about dive stories, again, here comes the radiator. <laughs> um, you've seen this iPad in action. Uh, it's very fast, it's very cool. I get to draw on Procreate on it when I'm not on my tiny little iPhone. You know, I've been drawing on Procreate there just for fun. And so um, I've been using, I've had quite a bit for business and I've made stickers, which comes to the next gift that I received, uh, which actually, you know, instead of my husband paying my business back money for an, uh, a purchase that we've, we made, using business funds, I decided, well, you can just trade me for uh, this gift. So sitting on the desk right here is my new Cricut machine. Um, I decided that, well, if I have this iPad, I might as well have the tool that I need to go with it instead of hand cutting stickers because he watched me hand cut some stickers in the first run of like little fiber friends stickers. And he was like, yeah, you probably need something else which is true. So I have a sneeze, another sneeze, maybe not, a Cricut machine here, which is just the Cricut Explore Air. We got it on sale at Michael's after the holiday. Uh, we went out and purchased that and used gift cards that we received as gifts to help deflate the cost a little bit. Um, and so now I have even more tools in my fiber studio. So I've been working a lot with these things as well. And as you can tell, we are a Mac family. I mean, we do have a, a PC in the other room that we use to game on and that my husband uses when he works from home, but we have iPhones, iPads, Apple TV. I also have my Mac book pro which I hopefully will never have to replace I refuse to replace it uh, because you know I love everything about it it still has all the ports on it it was like the, one of the last models before they took all the ports away um, I think they got it in 2015 2014 2015 I think it's 2015 um, yeah so pretty much when I started this podcast <laughs> uh, as one of my tools so uh, yeah, so with that, I'll show you the, the things that I made with this thing. All right, so <laughs> here are the little stickers that I made. So this one is a little chicken crocheting. Um, this is was not one that I put in the packages. This has like my measurements for the stickers. So when I'm in the program on my laptop, I can do it. So this is on a clear backed sticker. So I did two sets of stickers. Um, I did ones that were on clear clear back so it looks white but when you peel the sticker if I can peel the sticker <laughs> my fingers are cold I cannot peel this sticker ah! you know when your fingers get cold okay <laughs> so you can see it's a clear sticker so whatever you stick it on will be the translucent background for it, see how it's clear. So it's a matte clear, so it's not going to be too reflecty. And then I have these well reflections, uh, which are on a white background. So it's a white uh, vinyl sticker. And let me find one that I can. So I spent the whole weekend this weekend packaging <laughs> these little stickers. Um, but I wanted to do this for quite a while and I just didn't have the tools to do it and I thought it would be a fun addition to the shop. Um, so we have little crocheting chicken. There he is. Looking all cute and happy. Crocheting. Um, we have the knitting mouse. 
knitting this cute little scarf. Then we have crocheting squirrel. He's so happy hanging out. He's like, hey dude, let's crochet something really cool together. And then this was the sticker that started it off. So I had a sketch of this sticker done with Copics and pencil and marker and all that stuff. But I did it on my iPad and made it into a sticker. So this was the original Happy Fiber Friend sticker. So these are my little Happy Fiber Friends. And so I'm gonna put these up in the shop in little packs of four. So four stickers um, and Some will be, there'll be some up that are clear backed and some up that are white. There are, I think, about 15 of each that I made. And so I thought that would be really fun and interesting for you guys, and especially for those who are picking up and starting a knitting journal or a bullet journal for the new year. I thought it would be really nice to have that, you know, kind of little something something in the shop that if you're getting some yarn or some needles um, that you you know if, you, if you're doing a knitting journal that you can add a little fiber friend to your journal so I do plan to design some more stickers it's something that I really enjoy doing and it allows me to bring in more art into what I'm doing because I like to incorporate that stuff As you've seen with the tote bags and how I've put art on my totes um, I also, you know, have been looking for more ways to incorporate art just generally into my shop and also, you know, kind of keeping in with my shop's mission, which is to bring fun and new things and kind of uplifting things into the fiber arts community. Um, you know, I thought those little happy fiber friends were something really fun and it brings me a lot of joy to do it and it, I can do it, I can do it with you know, an easier time. Like it takes a bit less effort um, than pulling out pencils and erasers and having to, you know, draw and draw and draw and doodle. I can just do it on the iPad, which makes things a lot easier. So digital art is easier in that way. So still very enjoyable, still lovely. So yeah, so those are the things that I've been working on. If I can say so again, that would be great. So, so, so. And Pretty much the biggest project that I have been working on has been this room. So this room is now my new fire space. I have taken everything out of my kitchen. That was my goal for 2019 was to revamp my podcast and really um, dedicate my time to making more videos, which meant having a more dedicated space to make videos. And so I, right when the new year started, I was like, we're going to do this. Um, and it happened to coincide with some family things that were going on at the time with my kids. Uh, it was better. They used to have separate rooms, but as time has gone on, I think it was time for them to combine rooms and to sleep in the same room because both of them were having a bit of anxiety with being alone in the room at night. And certainly my husband and I don't want to sleep in the same room with our children. So because uh, we need that separation but uh, so we combined their rooms upstairs and then moved this room used to be the toys room and we moved that upstairs into my son's old room so they have like this little kitty wonderland pretty much <laughs> up by their rooms and uh, or up by their room and it's you know a really nice place for them to be by themselves they can play they can jump and have fun roll balls roll cars and not bother anyone so that's, that was really nice. And so I decided that it was best used, this space was best used as a dye studio and moving half of my stuff out of the old office, which you guys, that's where I used to film. So that was, you know, why this looks a little bit different. You know, it's green on the walls and stuff um, instead of gray. So I moved half of my stuff out of that room and then moved it into this room as you know, the place where I keep my bear yarns and my equipment. And, um, you know, so moving my kitchen here, my active 
dye supplies here. So like anything I would use in the kitchen is now in this room. And then the stuff that was in the office, so all my admin stuff, my paperwork, my taxes, you know, all my shipping labels, bags, um, all of that stuff is here. And some of the stock is in here. So a lot of this stuff right here is what's in stock in the shop or soon will be in stock. Like all this DK weight will be in the shop this weekend. Um, and then stickers. And then on this wall here, you can see this little rack right over here that I put up a piece of grid wall there so I can hang up crochet hooks and needles, which I'm now carrying in the shop. Yay! <laughs> um, so you'll see that as well. So yeah, so it's pretty much active dye stock. Oh, and I also have my soap making supplies in here so that when I make my next batch of wool wash, which I'm planning to film, um, I can do that pretty easily and I can seclude myself in this room. No children are around. It can be safer. Um, and the same thing with the dyes. It's safer if I am more secluded and it's not involved in the area where I am going to be preparing food. It takes so much stress off of me. So with a renewed sense of hope. <laughs> Here's to 2019 being the year of creativity that the shop gets revitalized and brought back up because 2018 was a little bit of a down year for me personally and the shop as well. And so I hope that you all will continue to join me here. So uh, without further ado, I will take you on a little shop tour and provide a little relaxing music and I hope that you enjoy it and I hope you enjoy seeing the creative space that I've made in this room and that you'll continue to see in this room in future videos. Um, yeah, so thank you guys for a good 2018. Thank you for continuing to subscribe and be here with me and kind of come on my crafty endeavors. And uh, here's to a great 2019. I hope to see you in my next video.